Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. To say that Linux Mint is a popular distribution of Linux, well, that would be an understatement. It's extremely popular, and with good reason. It's easy to use, everything works out of the box. It's no wonder why people love it so much. Recently, Linux Mint 22, codenamed Wilma, was released, and as usual, I'm here with a full review. In this video, we're going to check it out. And this latest release is the first release of Mint to be based on Ubuntu 2404, and it features version 6.2 of the Cinema desktop, along with Mint-specific tweaks and custom apps that cater to just about everything. There's incremental improvements throughout Mint 22, and the new release brings its entire application stack to a more modern platform while remaining true to the formula that made it famous in the first place. And during my time with Mint 22, I found it to be a very good release. It's well made. But the thing is, I came away thinking that perhaps Mint is outgrowing its Ubuntu base. So without any further ado, let's get into my review of Mint 22. And here's Linux Mint 22 in all its glory. I'm reviewing the Cinnamon edition of Linux Mint, and my first reaction is that it barely looks different than previous releases. In fact, unless you look very closely at the theme, you might not even notice a difference at all. The installer has also seen very little change. If you've ever installed Linux Mint in the past, you'll find the process is more or less the same in Linux Mint 22. Once you boot the live media at any point, you'll have the option to install Linux Mint. Once you open the installer, it'll ask you a series of questions, and after that's done, you'll be good to go. For me, it felt like the installer took a little bit longer than most Linux distributions, but it really wasn't all that bad. And the thing is, whether it's been updated or not, the installer does work. It installs Linux Mint on your system, it's easy to navigate, and who could ask for more than that? Now the biggest change this time around is the new Ubuntu base. And this happens every fourth release. This time, the project rebases on Ubuntu 2404. So the first thing to know is that the main goal for this release is for the project to provide a new, updated platform for its users. And that's not to say that there's no new features at all. It's just that none of them are really earth-shattering. I think at this point, even if this wasn't the first release on a new base, it's unlikely that Mint would have changed all that much regardless. Perhaps the biggest feature other than the new base is the inclusion of a dedicated app for signing into online accounts. So if you have a Google or Microsoft account, or an account on any of the supported services, you can sync that account to your Linux Mint installation. Now the thing is, this feature isn't really new. Other distributions have featured something similar for quite some time. In fact, Linux Mint also supported this feature in the past, but it hasn't been refactored for modern releases until now. New or not, the return of online accounts is definitely welcome, and the fact that it's developed as a standalone app these days means that you can also sync your accounts with the XFCE or Mate editions as well. Another new feature is a pre-installed Matrix client, and this is pretty cool. It's already set up to connect to the Linux Mint community, so through this app you could join the community and chat with other Linux Mint users. I think this is really cool, and every distribution should do this. Since a chat room is built into the distribution itself, it's very easy to get help from other people or to help other people. In fact, anytime you download a new distribution, it's a great idea to join the community for that distribution and help them out. Either way, the pre-installed Matrix client is worth checking out. Another feature that's worth discussing is within the Nemo file manager. And this file manager was already pretty good, but it's even better now because you could customize the actions in the right-click menu. There's a new action layout editor, and you can rearrange actions, you can override them, add separators, and things like that. And it's yet another example of the many customizations that you can make with this distro. Other improvements include, but aren't limited to, better support for high resolution displays, performance improvements with Mint install, the backend sound system was switched to Pipewire, the installation will use less disk space. But like I mentioned, there's nothing earth shattering here. If you like Linux Mint, you'll continue to enjoy it with this release. If you're not a fan, well, this release won't change your opinion. But if we look past the lack of exciting new features and accept Mint 22 for what it is, what we have is a desktop Linux distro that's well made with attention to detail pretty much everywhere. You could tell that the developers and his community are very passionate about Linux Mint. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you and I love creating Linux related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. 
And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro-themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv, or you could check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time, so it's a win-win. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. However, at this point, I think it's clear that Linux Mint is outgrowing its base. For example, with Ubuntu 2404, the Thunderbird application is now deployed as a snap package instead of by utilizing standard repositories. Because of this, the Linux Mint team has took it upon themselves to package Thunderbird so as to avoid having to deal with snap packages. And this is just the latest package that Mint has taken over for the same reason. This has happened before. And this comes off as very silly to me. I mean, Linux Mint decides, keyword decides, to base on Ubuntu, and then they complain about Ubuntu. It's like they're biting the hand that feeds. I mean, Ubuntu has said a long time ago that they're switching everything over to snap packages. So when it comes to Linux Mint, if they don't like the direction that Ubuntu is going, then why don't they switch their base to something else? I really wish there was a solution to this. And perhaps stranger, there's also another version of Linux Mint, Linux Mint Debian Edition. The Debian Edition aims to provide the same Linux Mint experience, but with Debian as its base instead of Ubuntu. And the reason why this exists is because the Mint team wants an alternative in case they need to abandon ship away from Ubuntu. So Mint, you have a Debian Edition, and clearly you're not really enjoying Ubuntu's base, so what are you waiting for? I mean, most of the work when it comes to switching is already done. They maintain the Debian Edition side by side with the flagship edition. So if snap packages aren't a good reason for the Mint team to switch over to another base, I don't know what is. But instead, its developers remain on Ubuntu's base while simultaneously complaining about it. It just makes no sense. In fact, the oppositional behavior when it comes to Mint is even worse in this release, as a handful of applications in Mint 22 were downgraded over a theming disagreement, which means that there's new features you might have benefited from, but oppositional defiance strikes again. But if you're willing to let that go, Linux Mint is a very good release. Despite the disagreements, the team really does put out a very good release each and every time. It's fast, it performs well, basically everything works out of the box. What more can you ask for? All in all, Linux Mint 22 is a fantastic release. It's very well made, like I've mentioned a few times now. It's just that I don't like to see the infighting. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, you have Linux Mint using Ubuntu's base while complaining about it. That just doesn't really look all that professional, especially while they're maintaining a Debian edition that they can switch to basically any time. But if you take the politics out of the equation, Linux Mint, like I mentioned, is a very good desktop. So if you want a Linux desktop that just works, then look no further than Linux Mint. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.